So polishing inside the engine, there's a lot of advantages that have been described from the effect of polishing. So the most significant one is you reduce carbon buildup. There's less likely to have hot spots that form inside the engine. So you lower the risk of detonation inside the engine. <laughs> So typical areas you would polish is really anywhere where the exhaust gases will flow out of the engine. If you've got direct injection, it probably pays to polish those intake ports that go into the engine just to maximize the airflow. But if you've got port injection where the fuel goes in the outside of the valve and is sucked into the combustion chamber itself, then you really do need imperfections on the surface because that aids the atomization of the fuel. You want that air and fuel to mix as well as possible. You really don't want that surface to be highly polished on the intake. And inside the engine, around the head, around the valves, if that's polished nicely, that can really resist carbon buildup and just help you to make a little bit more power on the engine and reduce the problem of detonation, allowing your engine to run at the maximum it can for as long as possible. So what about large valve conversions? So this is where you actually open up the valves themselves and the ports they sit in and just maximize them. So the scope you've got depends very much on the design of your head. On 20 valve heads, they tend to have quite a few crammed in there. There's usually always scope for increasing a mil or two, um, but your engine is quite unique. Whatever engine you've got, you really do need to do your research on it and just see what larger valve kits and conversions are actually possible on that head design. So with a lot of different manufacturers though, the easiest way of upgrading your head and maybe going to larger ports or going to a twin cam design is actually just to swap the head. So do your research, you will often find that different models within the same range, even with different engine capacities, use the same head design. So you want to make sure that the channels on the head match up with your engine block, particularly the oil and the cooling and it's an obvious given that the cylinder apertures have to match up perfectly as well. But that might be an option. So you've got an engine, get your new head with the twin cam characteristics that you want, the larger valves that the manufacturer offers in the performance variant. Get that flow tested and optimized and then fit it to your car. The benefit of doing that is you're not off the road for a long period of time. So normally you would take the head off your engine, get that worked on, and then when it's ready, you would put it back on your engine. And you can't use your car without a head unless you've got a willing family member that's happy to push the car wherever you need it to go. So uh, there's a little shortcut really to getting things done. I've seen people as well with project cars to have their daily driver, but to have an engine in the garage that they're developing that's got all of the performance parts and options in. So they can spend as long as they want setting that up and perfecting it. And then it becomes a straight engine swap project at the end and your car is not off the road for long periods of time. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. So we would love you to stay tuned. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.